Studio are so excited to be celebrating the 25th anniversary of Catan this year. And we are honored today to be able to speak with the man himself, the creator of Catan, Klaus Teuber. Klaus, it's great to have you here. Hi. Hi, Kelly. Where are you joining us from? Pardon? Where are you joining us from? <laughs> yeah, I'm in my office or my studio. And uh, yeah, and participate on uh, our video. Great. And we also have his eldest son, Guido, who is a managing director of Catan GmbH. And Guido, where are you right now? Hi, um, I am virtually in Rostorf uh, with Klaus, uh, which is the, the background. And then uh, physically, I'm in Oakland, California right now, where I live and work. And we also have Benjamin Teuber. Um, Benny, where are you from? I'm currently in Frankfurt. That's around 50 kilometers from uh, Rostov, uh, where we were born and raised. Um, and um, yeah, happy to be here. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We're really excited to have you here uh, to talk a little bit about um, the 25th anniversary and all of the exciting things we have going on. But before we get to that, you know, the last several months have been just unprecedented times and they've changed the way we all live and work and play. Uh, so we just wanted to check in with you on how you've all been doing. <laughs> okay, um, yes, yeah, so it's uh, um, a pretty hard time, but um, we have uh, the luck uh, that we have a garden and can go outside and um, since uh, four weeks we also uh, visit restaurants uh, okay we we take care but um, it's not so hard as in the beginning and also we are play play testing with uh, zoom uh, so we can work that's um, that's fine how are you doing then? Um, so yeah, lots lots of exercise. Uh, also, uh, it's nice to have a garden um, and then just to, to, to hang out uh, a little bit outside. Um, work has been very busy, which uh, has been a blessing. Um, and uh, there have some been some new opportunities. We had, for instance, a Catan live stream every Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific uh, that came on. So um, that's been like always like something to to move to a virtual space, but like really have that social experience. And um, yeah, lots of home cooking, um, spending time with the family, which, which was great. And uh, then uh, besides playing Catan, um, also um, exploding kittens and throw through burrito, which was a lot of family fun. So <laughs> family dinner every night, and then uh, a, a quick game of uh, some exploding kittens or like throw through burrito, and of course, Catan. Love it. Benjamin, what Actually, have you been we... keeping busy with? We recently played uh, Throw Throw Burrito as well in a in a hotel room because we are allowed to travel again now. Um, so we made a small trip, uh, but it was too late. So we got uh, uh, interrupted by the concierge saying that we were too loud. But that is great. <laughs> so like um, the, the the times were quite unusual, um, staying in all the time. Um, my my terrace is is very like the the area to go out is very small here in Frankfurt. Um, but now that we can visit restaurants again, um, you you start appreciating uh, being able to to go out again to the streets and 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 go shopping more easily and stuff. So um, that has been a very good um, learning. And also some some good things that developed were like uh, starting to play uh, games with friends via internet um, has been something that I didn't know I would be missing it someday when. Um, yeah, now you can actually meet and play again much much more easily. Mm -hmm. Klaus, you talked about doing play testing over Zoom. Uh, when you started 25 years ago, did you ever in your wildest dreams think that that would be a thing that you could do? No, never. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I had uh, some games before published and also had three games of the year. And um, my experience with my former uh, games uh, was that um, each year they all, all only sell, sold sold a half or less. <laughs> and um, then uh, one year after Catan was published, I uh, look at the paper and oh, it's increasing. <laughs> that uh, was for me uh, very very surprising and. Uh, after 
two years, um, 1998, then I realized, okay, it, uh, it's increasing and uh, it will become a, a big uh, success. Well, but it took uh, three years that I saw that. Wow, and, and during that time, you um, continued just uh, working and doing your everyday thing. Um, did you ever think that uh, once you started seeing the sales go up and seeing it get more popular, did you really have an idea then that it would be the absolute like cultural phenomenon that it is now? No, I never had this idea. It uh, was growing um, and um, then um, I, uh, in the US it, it took longer until the big success um, uh, in Greece. And, uh, I think 10 or 12 years, no? and uh, Guido, you um, watched the development and perhaps can talk a little about that. Yeah, uh, in the in the States also, we didn't uh, anticipate that it, it would become so successful. When I first um, came over to the States in 97, I met Pete Fenton pretty early on, and um, I, I saw it as a hobby to just be involved. I thought it was great. I, I had my move to the United States and then just um, having um, my, my dad's game here um, published, uh, that, was, that was fun. And um, then I continued that as a hobby and then started to help out um, my dad like with you know, publishing, work, working with Pete and Mayfair Games in those days. And then in 2009, um, the, a Wired article came out about Catan and that put us on the map. And uh, through that article and then the feedback that we got, we also realized that uh, a lot of people in, in tech, teachers, um, venture capital people, like they were uh, playing it. And we realized that up to that point, we thought it was just in the um, hobby market, um, just Gen Con, of course, we, we went every year and origins and uh, we knew that like Catan was popular in, in colleges um, but that, that was sort of the watershed moment where we realized that uh, Catan had, had sort of um, re reached like uh, more demographics and um, yeah so but it, it took really a long time uh, and it uh, grew very organically and slowly but steadily so that was exciting to see and to, to be part of that development. And um, Klaus, what has been the most significant moment of the past 25 years for you? Yeah, there are um, uh, some significant moments. Um, the first one was uh, in the end of 1998, when I decided to, uh, to leave my uh, former profession as a technician um, and uh, yeah, only from Catan and my games. And I got the freedom uh, to create my day um, as I want. Uh, this was a very, very um, big step for me. And uh, then uh, in Colonia, in 1918, there was the World Championship of Catan. And I saw a lot of people from all nations sitting together and uh, playing without hate, without, um, how do you call, call that, um, for, for child preacher? Prejudices. Prejudices. Prejudices, yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, it was a wonderful moment. And I, I thought, um, okay, it would be a nice thing when uh, statesmen of all, all countries would play more together and uh, learn from each other that um, there are other ways um, to um, act. Yeah. I love that. And Benjamin, um, you've told me in previous talks about the big game that you got to be present at um, in the Netherlands, I believe. Um, and I think you also talked about that feeling of everyone playing together. And what do you think about Catan is so unifying? So I, I didn't have the pleasure to join the Netherlands uh, big game, but uh, we hosted the one in Essen in 2015. You're right, sorry. And it, and it started as a, as a idea in the restaurant in the evening when we were finishing our game testing and, and had like one or two wine and then 
uh, we said, why not bring a thousand people into the halls of Essen and do that? And then next day we were still thinking it was a good idea. So we, we started doing that. But at that moment, when, when we stood up there at the, uh, the stage and were like moderating this, um, that was really a moment in which I felt this is overwhelming of uh, how many people Catan manages to, to bring together actually and, and play unified and and frankly it, it has not been about winning or losing that's that's at least how i got the feeling maybe for some it was but like the whole atmosphere of that of that hall was magic so um there was really an incredible overwhelming feeling to um to experience that and to see that Catan can un unify so many people playing together mm -hmm. and i think we've seen that a lot over the past uh, few months too with people playing across the world or, you know, across their town um, as a way to come together when they had to stay apart. Mm. Yeah. Um, Klaus, what release, which game and release have you been most proud of? Ah, okay. <laughs> to be proud of a game, mm, I think I, I love all my games. <laughs> they have <laughs> all the, all they have their place in my, in my board and each game uh, had a lot of um, 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 passion yeah I give to the game and um, so it, it, it would be the same as to say okay I have 10 children which is my <laughs> beloved children this is very hard to say but sure Qatar is the most successful successful game and so um, it brings me the freedom to um, do what I want and uh, so it's, uh, you can say, it's the most important game for me, sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe Löwenherz? Hmm? Maybe Löwenherz? Yeah, there a lot. Uh, I, I say, okay, I, I love all my kids. And um, each game had its time. And, um, and uh, Löwenherz, sure, it's, it's, it's one game I, I, I love too and uh, would play it uh, each moment if you want. Can you translate that for us, Benjamin, what that means? Löwenherz is um, uh, Lionheart. I, I think it was published under the name of um, King Richard or something in, in the US. Uh, do, hey. Domain. Domain. Domain, right. Domain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Guido or Benny, do you have a, a favorite title? In, in the Catan, uh, so yeah. what I uh, right. like to play, uh, well, um, Cities and Knights, of course, is, is a classic. It's just uh, when, once you've learned the, the additional rules, it's very rewarding. And um, and then um, I really like uh, Inca Catan, which is a Klaus and Benny collaboration. And just like it really, um, the, the, the level of adrenaline um, that, that's in, in that like sort of fast paced, exciting, um, game experience that that brought something very new to Catan in my mind and so like that's that's currently my favorite to play and I, I played uh, the AI version on um, Catan Universe uh, a lot just from for myself especially right now during Corona. As I, I wrote a book it's called My Journey to Catan. It's um, uh, in published in German and there uh, I described my way and at the end of the way was City Nights. And uh, because Guido um, told us that he loved uh, City and Nights. And this was the end of the development. Not the, the base game, but uh, City and Nights. Because um, when uh, I developed the game, um, I had uh, at the beginning a, a big pop prototype with uh, everything, islands and nights and, 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 and so on. And I had to reduce it to the core and um, that people could understand what, what happens in this game. And, but in my vision, I want to, to get to Citizen Knights. And later when um, we were successful with, with the base game, I got the possibility to develop this game, which I, um, I had the ideas for Citizen Knights long before. Yeah. Yes, and we are super excited about that book. It is coming to English uh, later this year, and um, we're going to have more details coming about, out about that really soon, but I'm really excited for 
um, this uh, publication because it's it's very um, special edition of that book. Yeah, I'm excited but to read it. What I just do is to uh, uh, subscribe 1,000 <laughs> sheets. <laughs> That's my uh, work I, I, I do at the moment, if you ask. Yep, all hand signed by <laughs> Mr. Teuber. So you got to do some hand stretches. <laughs> yeah. Keep your hands stretched out. And I, and I took a pen, which is, uh, yeah, I have it, okay, which is, moment. Which is uh, on the other side, you see that. Um, that is a uh, shape of the front side. That means uh, it's original. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, hand not printed. So cool. Yeah, that's going to be a, a fantastic feature. I think a lot of people are going to want that. Um, so along with all the uh, success and, and good times, there must have also been some challenges. Um, have you made any mistakes that you have learned from? Okay. Oh, I think um, we all make mistakes all the time, and uh, we are learning from mistakes. And to uh, develop gains um, is a long way of making mistakes. So um, it's a uh, learning by doing. And um, after over thirty years uh, of developing games, I can say, okay, it was uh, sometimes a very frustrating time when you uh, develop the game and now it's uh, isn't that way or was that goal that you have wanted to reach yeah and so um, you have to say okay I give up it makes no sense it's, it's, it's done very hard you you worked one year or two years on a game and then say no uh, but uh, this is on the other side a wonderful process because it's a uh, a little bit of discovering new new worlds, yeah, and, and, uh, and, and each game is is a kind of of, of a world, yeah, which you um, um, develop. Yeah. So, okay, there were many mistakes, but also <laughs> uh, by learning from these mistakes, uh, at the end, uh, success. Uh, Benny, since you've started in the um, game design and development area. What was the most difficult piece of feedback that you've heard about a design and how did you use that to improve um, your next steps? I think it's very close by to, to what my dad just said. Like uh, we had our very first game um, and, and we loved it. Like we were playing it like every week when I visited them and, uh, and we had a lot of fun in the family and we always play in the family first. And, um, and, and then at some point we were like, okay, let's, um, let's bring it to an editor and, and let's see like uh, what he thinks of that. And then they played it and then he was like, well, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's nice. It's nice. And, and we were really surprised by that because we maybe were emotionally so attached to it and, 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 and we really liked it. But you have to say that this is a game that you have to play um, like three or four times to really get it. So there, there are some mechanisms in it that make it kind of tougher to understand. And the first time player and in the market as we have it today, people give one chance to a game. And if they don't like it, they have 1,000 different more games to play per year. So um, it was just good enough. So. That was the first game we developed and then we had to to bury it and it was never published um so that was quite a learning and um as as as, as my dad always says like uh the, the patience in developing games is maybe one of the most important things to to take into consideration um has has hit us hard in the very first development we had so that was a good learning mm -hmm. yeah, it was a very exciting game from, for us, for our family, when we played it, and uh, my wife uh, gave uh, the title for this game. I, I don't know what's the the, the um, translation of it. Uh, in German, it is called "Ruhig Blut." Do you, do you know? "Ruhig uh, Blut." Uh, it, it's kind of like um, if if you're. It's the literal translation. Calm down. 
calm down? Can you say? Yeah, to, to be cool, um, to, 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 to be measured cool, um, to be composed, um, that, that's kind of, there isn't really, um, it, it's a perfect expression in German, but there isn't really like a, a literal translation um, for, for There are a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. I'm finding. Oh, that's interesting. I have not heard of that game. I, I love that story. Um, if you could go back in time and tell your past self uh, something about Catan that you know now, what would you tell yourself? <laughs> we made one rule change in Citizen Nights. <laughs> <laughs> It was um, um, when it was finished the, the development. I was very content with it, and uh, I had never um, the wish to change anything. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think maybe maybe to jump uh, in there, there's there's one thing that you um, like. We we grew this brand so organically, and and Klaus always says like. Um, the editor said maybe someday we'll sell four million games of like of Qatar. Yeah, yeah. And then Klaus was like, oh, no way, <laughs> never ever gonna happen. And yeah. um, and we just let the brand grow from '95 on. So we had um, many different licensees uh, around the world, and we had really like different interpretations of the brand. And uh, we had, for example, a Mega Man Katan in, in Japan at some point, which we kind of didn't know. So like, had we known that Catan could have become such a global phenomena, uh, maybe we would have started growing the brand equally in, in, in all the countries because there is something really deeply enrooted in the, in the brand's values and, and the moral that it contains. Like it's always about cooperation and win-win. And, and like all these messages are now more clearly um, transported i think than we than we managed back then yeah that's a good point benny i think um looking at it in a more cohesive way um earlier on um in, in terms of like that the message that that katan um gives and, and like just to look at it and involve like the different partners um that, i think that that's something we we could have um done too so and then uh, going back to to your question um kelly you no know, just um that that's connected to um, what maybe you would have not expected and um, the phenomenon of piracy um, that the that board games as a, as a genre because Catan was affected by piracy but not only Catan but I would have never um, assumed that or uh, thought that the, um, board games would be affected by piracy and in 2017 it was really hard for a lot of publishers a lot of board games were pirated and um, that was something that we did not, that uh, I didn't anticipate. And I wish I had anticipated it, uh, and, and addressed it a little earlier. And we, we, we got a handle on as, as a team and, and you guys um, helped, uh, you know, Asmo Day was, was really helpful. Um, yeah, but it was, it was interesting that like, you know, you think like mu movies, music, et cetera, will be pirated, but like board games, well, they fly under the radar. They're not interested, uh, in the, the, but uh, it, it was a problem. And so, um, that the success always comes also with like the, there's a shadow side uh, to it and um, uh, it's it's been great that, that we have uh, um, gotten that under control but it was definitely something that um, felt existential at that time. Yeah that is a, a really great observation that's completely true it's, it was something when I joined the team had no idea was an issue and clearly became, you know, very clear to me very quickly how much of an issue it can be. And, and that's something that, um, you know, remains something to stay vigilant against and has been kind of an ongoing issue. Um, so you guys have talked um, throughout this a little bit as doing a lot of stuff together as a family. Obviously, not a lot of people know that Catan is um, a family business. And um, you know, you guys all work together. What's that like working together as a family? I like it very much <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's not only uh, private uh, themes I have with my sons and uh, my wife's, uh, but also uh, business teams. And uh, so we have often the opportunity to be together, to play, test together and to stay together, yeah, and then that's, that's, it's 
for me as a father, I, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, for me, um, it's, it's also, it's wonderful to, to every day wake up and, and know that like um, we're doing this as a family. Um, and, and it's especially since Klaus and Benny are in Germany and I'm in, I live and work in the US. And so we, we have quite the geographical distance uh, between us and that to, to have something to, to have a common passion uh, around the, the, the game business is something that, that's wonderful because we, we check in with each other um, every day. And um, just right now, it's, it's kind of tough for me because, uh, because of, you, know, uh, you, you cannot travel. Uh, so usually I would go over to to visit um, my family in in Germany, and we would we would play games, and you know I, I would get to see all the new um, game prototypes that uh, Klaus and Benny are coming up with. Um, I'm a little bit more on the business side, but when I go to Germany, I really enjoy um, you know playing with them. And um, but over the years, it's it's been a, a wonderful bridge to to have uh, something to to work on it uh, commonly, and then be, while we're on the games we also you know just keep in touch and, and we know what's going on in each other's lives and we stay connected uh which is which is wonderful which i also uh, didn't think that um that it, it was a challenge for me moving over to the united states and then to have that distance and like the way we were able to to bridge that and, and be so connected uh is, is just wonderful mm -hmm. the it's in interesting the the picture behind uh, guido is a photo from uh, our um, yeah nearby landscape. Yeah, only we have to go from from our house 500 meters. Uh, and this was, uh, I think, the way when uh, I told Guido, oh Guido, in, this was in 2002. Um, I cannot um, uh, do all these things. It's too much. Yeah, um, and um, I cannot. Uh, effort all, all people who want to publish it in, in the country. I need help. I have to, um, um, you know, I, I need someone who helps me. And then Guido told me, uh, huh, okay, why not me? <laughs> this was, this little hill behind is uh, from a volcano. And I think we were at this Yes, yeah, it, was, it was right there. It was right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's very symbolic. Uh, it's mm. again, I I cannot imagine how people went through a pandemic. Uh, in, in technology really helps a, a lot to to bridge that. And then in in our case, uh, technology really enables us to keep working on a very analog product. Um, and so like that's uh, that's great. But yes, it, it's it's very symbolic because. Uh, Virtually, I, I can be in Rostov, Germany, and um, it's uh, yeah, as you said, Klaus. That's that's where we took our hike and uh, um, and decided to to work together. That's awesome. Um, and you mean I think the nice thing is that we both studied something that both Guido and I didn't actually um, intended to come to the company. We were both studying something else, and. Um, then Guido started at some point to join the company and uh, both of them said like, oh, if you want to join at some point, um, we probably always will need more help uh, and it would be great to have you. Um, and I think I, I never intended it. I actually studied psychology and then management and, and did some other internships and stuff. But at some point I was feeling like actually uh, rather than selling um, a, a washing machine or something I would love to actually work with that brand that I really like and have been growing up with yeah I think that's 10 years ago now right and um, yeah I didn't regret any day of it it's actually really nice and um, and of course when you start working with family you you need to think okay how much how close is good to work with if you're like family anyhow and then um, we really got along before well, and then uh, actually having that daily contact actually uh, even made the bond stronger. So that's, uh, yeah, it's really a nice story for us, I think. Yeah, and one, one way it also allows us to, we're a very small company, uh, we're, we're basically just the, the three of us, and then uh, Arndt Bain, our um, head of digital, um, and, and then Gavin, um, 
but so it's just a, a team of, of five uh, people really. But uh, we, since we are in, in Europe and the US, we can kind of work around the, the clock. And, and Benny and I, um, you know, Benny and oh, 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 your mother. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, yes. <laughs> so six, we're a team of six, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's important. Um, so then when, for instance, uh, Benny's evening and, and when I start my work day, then we just, um, when Benny briefs me what's what's going on. And then uh, before, you know, when, when I stop working and checking emails, maybe, uh, before I go to bed, then I, I'll, I'll send Benny like a little WhatsApp uh, audio message and just kind of tell him what's going on. So it's it's really nice this flow and like also like we um, because we all have our areas uh, that that we work on like uh, so geographically um, you know and then but also like in in terms of um, Klaus, you're you're now um, really have. Uh, discovered storytelling and and like you 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 really you love development and and you um, I think you really uh, love like and and you thrive uh, doing doing that and really being able to devote that. I really like the the business aspects, um, the dealing with the uh, licensing partners and and uh, being just involved in in marketing. And so it's been great to work with you guys, Kelly and and Alex and. Uh, Benny, I think you um, you you can you you do it all from development to to business. So we all have have, have our areas, and just to 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 have that ownership of of your own area. I think that um, people always ask me here, like, what what is the secret sauce like with the family business? Because you know, a lot of people come to me and say, like, well, it's re it's really difficult uh, in our family because there's a lot of competition, maybe envy. And so um, my advice is is always to um, it is it is also important, um, especially maybe if personalities are really different to to have like your own area. Uh, and then with us, I think it it does help that we have like similar personalities. Um, the the concept of proportionality, you know, just like when there's a, a conflict or an issue or something like. Um, we we don't have temperaments where uh, we, we just go. Uh, crazy or something so it's it's always like proportional um uh, action and reaction and i think that that helps just to have like similar personalities um at least from my observation to and, and that that helps to to have a steady hand at, at like even navigating through difficult times um yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i've totally seen that about um all three of you and the way that you um work together and hang out together you can you can totally see it and i can see why it works so well but it is i think remarkable because a lot of families that try to work together do have a lot of conflict or troubles and so i think you guys are, are quite um unique in that way um klaus and guido you guys are have both been working dads managing a successful global brand what advice do you have for people to maintain um, a work family balance? Yeah, that, that's a really good uh, question. So for, for, for me, it's, it's definitely, um, I, I like when I work, then I, I like to be really focused. Um, but then also it, it's super important to take care of you know, make sure like that, that you really have the time uh, for for your family, and then um, personally also I think like to to work out like that for me helps uh, a lot to just like um, have have stability and then just to be available uh, both for my family and then also be uh, present at, at work. Um, and you know that's that's sometimes easier said than done. I think we have uh, I, I personally now have sort of reached uh, that. That, that sort of state where where it can where I think that that's that's very manageable. It's always hard when you when you start out when you when you have a startup, um, and and when you're not um, when when you're still growing and and then that's that's really um, hard. So like when my kids were younger and the and and Catan was much uh, smaller and uh, you know we, we didn't know um, that you know how it would do in the United United States, which is now our most uh, our strongest uh, market. Um, it, it was, it was, I, I worked more hours and uh, I think also um, that for you, uh, Klaus, it was, was uh, kind of 
uh, you had also like some some rougher times where it was really the, the business was very demanding and then so like um, it, it, it is when you when you have that luxury of being able to to have that work-life balance then I think it's really important to seize it and sometimes it's you have to exercise control because it's just a work opportunity it seems like just so amazing that you get lost in it and, and you just then maybe don't pay enough attention attention to your family so it's a it's a daily it's almost like a mindfulness exercise to to make sure to to strive for that balance for for me at least that, that is mm -hmm. okay. i think we we all uh, together are very respectful each to each other and i think this is very um, important for a family business never lose the respect from each other yeah yeah um, well, we are getting kind of close on time. I don't know how much time you have left, but um, I'm just going to um, kind of switch topics here a little bit and um, talk about um, maybe some um, it, games that have inspired you um, as you've gone into developing, I mean, not just Catan games, but all games. Um, you know, Catan is very influential and has inspired um, so many other game designers and players. What games have inspired you um, and kind of keep you interested? Mm. No games have inspired me because uh, from the beginning of my development, I had stories that I, I, I read, read a story uh, from uh, the um, history of, of mankind or uh, novels and sometimes the, the first novel I read um, um, which was very important for my game development was um, uh, The Riddle Masters of Patricia McKillip. It's a fantasy uh, um, novel and um, this was the first moment where I had a feeling okay I'm so sorrow, sorrow, sorry, <laughs> so I have had so, so much sorrow <laughs> to end this book and I want to have a possibility to experience the story in a game and um, this was the beginning and uh, since that um, at the beginning of a game development from um, each de uh, game development there was a book or a story or something else and then I um, take what I need to um, tell this story in the game could be dice, could be cards, could be but what I need for this story. And uh, Catan was the story of the Vikings when they explore the, the ocean, not only sailing on the coast, but they developed, uh, they <laughs> discovered Iceland. And, and uh, so, in my Im imagination, I um, want to experience in the game what they are doing. Yeah, they, are, um, they need wood for their houses, they need um, um, wheat uh, for, for, for their food. And um, so this was the, the, the ground for, for Catan. Yeah. Awesome. And what advice do you have for aspiring game designers who are trying to get into this um, hobby? Uh, my advice is not to have in, in, in the brain to earn a lot of money now. Now I make a game and, and earn a lot of money. Um, you, you have to, when you paint a picture or when you write a novel, uh, it's all the same. You, you need passion. Uh, you need um, your heart to start beating for, for that what are you doing. And um, that may be not uh, be a, a key for success. But a chance to get success will be will become more or um, bigger. I love that. Um, what do you think uh, the future holds for Catan? Um, are there still stories that you want to tell but haven't told yet? Are there ideas you still want to explore? Yeah, the future is more uh, for Benny and Guido, perhaps the Benny. Can you tell something about that? I think um, a very exciting project we're currently doing is um, is based on the Niantic Real World platform. Uh, it's called Catan World Explorers. Um, 
So you, you'll have your mobile walk through the streets and you'll harvest, you'll trade, you'll build in settlements. And uh, we are, yeah, we've been thinking about it and working on it for quite a long time. And we're now in the, uh, in the beta test in New Zealand. So um, that is one of the products where I think 20 years ago, we would not have been able to imagine that this is something that the future could hold. So um, next to some good analog board game developments we're currently uh, pursuing and, and have ideas in mind, I think um, it's always good um, to, to look out for the next novelty for, uh, innovation on the horizon because there is just so many things that are yet unexplored. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before we uh, run out of time, I thought it'd be fun to ask you just some non-game related questions just to get to know you guys a little better. So if you each just want to kind of go around and, and give me a one or two word answer, um, what's your favorite color? Who, who should uh, answer? <laughs> out, each of you, in, if you want to start with Klaus, go in age order. <laughs> My favorite color is blue. And uh, it's also the color which I take to play. My favorite color is blue as well. And when we play together, I always have to choose another color. Because they <laughs> steal me my yellow at the beginning. <laughs> so my favorite color has always been yellow. And so I picked yellow in Catan when I was four. And then it's hard for dad to deny a four-year-old the favorite color. So I guess that's <laughs> that's why Blau, that's why Klaus had to choose uh, blue now. Uh, <laughs> I think yellow is my favorite color in general. And what's your favorite food? Food, spaghetti, always spaghetti. <laughs> so my my favorite food. It's it's a tough question because it's so much. When I when I go to Germany, the first thing I will eat is a kebab and a schnitzel. Uh, it, it, the, the order may vary, but those are the, the two things. And then uh, here, uh, just uh, the U.S. and the, I, the Bay Area where I live, there's just like it's, it's food paradise. Uh, so I think my go-to uh, would be Mexican and I love sushi. But uh, we, uh, there's even some good German restaurants here now in, in Oakland and, and Berkeley. So uh, I... I hit up those spots too um, well now it's difficult but yeah so um but i love all sorts of cuisines but those would be the the main ones yeah i think i like um asian asian cuisine lately uh, mostly like some some just like vegetables and, and soy sauce some duck um has been steak for ages uh, that's become less now uh, spaghetti actually i eat a lot and i like many, many things a lot. <laughs> it was funny when I visited Guido uh, and we went to the German restaurant. It's been one of the rare cases that I've been to a German restaurant because uh, here in Frankfurt, there are not too many or like you, you don't go because you go somewhere else. So I kind of appreciated the German food that I had uh, in Oakland. Love that. Uh, what was your favorite subject in school? Yeah, in school, your favorite? Mm -hmm. Your favorite uh, subject. The subject. Topic. The uh, Lieblingsfach. 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 Oh, so, sorry, I didn't know that word. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I liked uh, geography in the beginning and then history. Uh, that were, were my two favorite. Um, um, uh, yeah. And uh, then uh, when I uh, was 16, chemistry. It's a little me, chemistry, a little bit like uh, developing games. You need uh, <laughs> several uh, uh, things uh, to prove something new. Mm -hmm. For me, my favorite subject was always the the social sciences, and then um, that's also like I, when I started to study, I um, uh, college uh, was political science. Yeah, I think uh, the translation of my favorite subject was uh, uh, politics and economy. Um, do you have any pets? And what are their names, if you do? I know Guido's got a dog. Oh, yeah, I, I, I do have uh, a dog. It's a, uh, 
um, a, a mix of a, a German Shepherd and Husky, and uh, her name is Callie Rue. I used to have a, a, a butchie when I was six, and then it flew out of the window, and that was traumatic, so I never had one. Oh. <laughs> let it be, let it be. <laughs> traumatic story. Still not clear why the window was open. Just, uh, <laughs> just uh, yeah, you're stabbing in uh -huh. an open wound here. <laughs> was Sorry. A, a very angry bird. <laughs> a little devil. devil it was actually <laughs> quite an angry bird. <laughs> uh, uh, in former times, uh, my parents had uh, dogs, and uh, I grew up with dogs. But um, now I have, uh, and later I had an aquarium with fishes, and now I have no, no, no pet. All right. Well, that's all the time we've got right now. So, um, Klaus and Guido and Benny, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, congratulations on 25 years of Catan. Uh, it's been such a pleasure working with you guys, and uh, we're so glad to um, share this. Hello, <laughs> to share this interview. <laughs> and, um, this, this was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us for this special video, and we we look forward to a time when we can finally meet together again in person and and. See you all um, in the flesh. So until then, stay safe and healthy, and um, we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thank very you much, Colleen. Hopefully, yeah. see you soon Thank again you. in yeah. real life. Yeah. Yeah.